Good morning, everybody. I'm Katie Matheny. I'm the executive director of Encompass, and I'm here today with Rich Jenkins, who Hello. is our artist in residence of Encompass. Oh, thank you. He's been <laughs> helping us these past couple of years in the village of Susayan in Haiti, where we work to just beautify the community and bringing people into this really cool artistic expression of community. And so I'm excited yeah. to hear from you today, Rich, just about thank everything you. that you're doing and what it's doing, not just in Haiti, but in you yeah. too, because that's yeah. so important about the change that's, that's happening in you and the people who are involved in this. So, yeah. yeah so if you want to just kind of, you know, in a few short words, tell us like how you got involved in Haiti and why Haiti. There's so many countries in the world. I know you've traveled a lot, but why, why this place? Um, well, first of all, uh, Encompass, and I think a lot of people know that my son Joey was one of the founders, mm -hmm. and I've been hearing a lot about uh, Haiti and his trips to Titayan. Yeah. And uh, as I was as I was writing, um, a lot of it came out of guilt. Mm -hmm. I just kind of felt like here you guys were doing all this wonderful work in Haiti. Joey had been like eight times, and his wife. Stephanie, mm -hmm. and I kind of just felt like it was my time to go and see what was going yeah. on. So, so what surprised you the first time you went? You know, I, I guess the amount of gray. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty prepared for the heat mm -hmm. and humidity, and that was my biggest fear. <laughs> I um, remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I complained about it a lot even before I got yeah. there, but I will say that I did survive it, and, um, and you everything can turned out, yeah, and you can too. <laughs> Everything turned out great, um, but what I noticed was uh, once we got outside of Port-au-Prince, uh -huh. just um, you know the lack of trees. Uh, there was a lot of bushes, but the roads were uh, just dusty gray. The buildings mm -hmm. were gray. Um, everything just had that like gray tinge to it. Yeah. And there was the, the first trip I went on. There was a lot of trash blowing around and a lot of goats. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of expected that. But when we were driving up the road. Um, from the Mission of Hope yeah. to go up to the Maranatha House Orphanage. Mm -hmm. There was a, off to the right, there was a, um, a building with an old kind of um, faded mural on it of Disney yeah. characters. Oh, yeah. And it just stood out so much to me in all that gray. But um, yeah, I couldn't get that all in my mind. And then when we got to Maranatha House, um, just seeing all the kids and everything was wonderful. I'm uh, playing with them and getting to know everybody and being referred to as Papa Day Joey. Oh, that's cute. I just couldn't help but think about um, all the gray, how that one little mural stood out to me yeah. so much in that landscape. Yeah. And how I kept thinking, well, maybe we could change that. Yeah. So that one mural, like, what did it, how did it make you feel when you saw it in contrast to all the gray? Well, it's kind of like an oasis of color. Huh. Um, and I couldn't help but think of all the murals that we have here in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're just vibrant with, with murals. Yeah. And you, you probably know that the traffic has increased uh, exponentially over the mm -hmm. last few years. I tend to sit in traffic a lot, but mm -hmm. the one thing I love is that I can usually find a piece of art to look at, um, or whether I'm just having lunch and sitting having a cup of coffee, yeah. that I can just kind of ponder on an art mural and just wonder what the artist was thinking and what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, why can't we take that experience to yeah. Titayan? Well, and the interesting thing, you know, comparing it to Portland, Portland is just a vibrant culture. Yes. Right? And then we have our art to match that. And ha Haitians are vibrant people. Yes, like, they, they are. live life fully, right? Yes. Like, their laughter comes from their belly, and they're, they just live life full. And But then it's like the external... Um, manifestations of that in the artwork doesn't seem to match that right and and it's like gosh you wouldn't want people to judge how fully you live life based off of how drab yeah your color is here well i think it was on the second trip to haiti um which was in the month of june um was there when kimmy and beth were there for two months mm -hmm. and i had taken a whole lot of um, watercolor pencils yeah and paper and i would get up early in the morning and then one kid would come out and you know cuddle up next to me and then two and then three and then the whole group was just there with paper and pencils and water and they were having so much fun drawing and that yeah. just kind of told me how much they love art and yeah. how vibrant they really are right and you're right just the way they're dancing and playing and mm -hmm. jump roping and skipping um yeah. yeah, it's hard not to smile when you're there. Right. So you've been in Haiti a couple trips now. You've been seeing the gray, experiencing the vibrancy of the culture. How did you get started? 
So I guess that tipping point was coming back to Portland, mm -hmm. having had that amazing experience the first time. And I just kept talking to Joey about it. I just could not let it go. Mm. And then Joey just said, well, why don't you just, you know, try and make this happen? So I actually would see artists um, in downtown Portland painting murals, and I would just pull over and go back and talk to them. Oh, cool. I talked to um, tens of artists in Portland. Uh, started just stopping into Miller Paint. Uh -huh. How would you go about um, preparing a wall for mm -hmm. painting? Um, and then I started started to come up with an idea, and then would take it back to Melky. Mm -hmm. I always tell a joke about I come up with these just different um, circles of different colors, just kind of moving into one, really basically going down the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Melky was just like, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Which I'm so glad he did because it really pushed me to think of a mural that was more specific to the Maranatha house yeah. and to Encompass. Yeah. Um, so what did that first mural look like? The first mural, actually, uh, the left side of it is um, a painting of Mount Hood uh -huh. and some mountains and the trees. And then there's an um, airplane, which is supposed to be Encompass, and uh -huh. then we're flying to Haiti. And uh -huh. then you have uh, palm trees and Haitian mountains and the Haitian flag, mm. and just showing the, um, the sisterhood or brotherhood mm. between Titayan yeah. and Portland or the Northwest. Yeah. And from there, the murals um, have just been to represent the, the hand of God in our life. Mm. And actually, that's one of my favorite ones. It was designed by a group of young men at the um, McLaren Juvenile Detention Center. Wow. which I had just a wonderful time working with those guys. I bet that was guys. really cool for them to think about, you know, even if they're, because they're locked up, right? Yep. So yep. they're all incarcerated. But the potential to have impact beyond their cell, like yes. beyond their state, beyond their country, like really into another part of the world, that's cool. Well, and these uh, wonderful group of young men, um, their goal is to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. They, you know, freely admit they took and that they have to make reparations back. Yeah. Um, they raised $500 for the paint wow. and supplies while incarcerated for this mural, which is just absolutely stunning. Um, so really, this mural isn't just about art. It's about empowering the people involved. Exactly. Like, I mean, just that example alone speaks volumes about what's possible yep. for those incarcerated young men. And then for you, too, like you are an artist, right? This isn't just something you thought one day, oh... I'll pick up a paintbrush. Like this is part of your identity and history, right? Exactly. Um, okay. Even even uh, some low points in my life. You know, I had uh, worked a lot with therapists to get myself back on track. And one of the things that meant the most to me was um, a therapist that was an art therapy yeah. major, yeah. and I would start drawing and working through some issues that I had. Yeah. And so that stuck with me and propelled me to go on to art school at the Pacific mm. Northwest College of Art. Um, so yeah, art, and I believe that art affects all of us. Mm -hmm. We all, whether we're you know in the cooking mm -hmm. or banking, we all need, we all have a type of creativity yeah. that I believe we're supposed to share with each other. Yeah. yeah. So the guys at McLaren, when we started, so what this had, they had to do was really do some research on mm -hmm. what is Haiti, who are the Haitian people, mm -hmm. and they started to see a lot of similarities between their lives, you know, growing mm -hmm. up in poverty, mm -hmm. and. Um, and lots of violence around them. Yeah. And then, you know, hearing about everything that the Haitian people have been through and the way that they have come through that. Mm -hmm. And that's how they started to come through and have this this um, this vision of a mural with the hand of God mm -hmm. and this influencer tree and mm -hmm. then birds flying from the hand to the tree. It was Gosh, that's pretty so amazing. Cool. And to th think about how, like, the story of people in Haiti is influencing us here and people here you know so often i think as north americans we think oh we have the answers we're going to go to haiti or impoverished countries and we're going to fix yeah. whatever the issue is but having been there so often both of us we realize it's almost more true in reverse yeah you know where you go and you think you're helping and you are but really like so much of it comes back to you and changes you that's what all my friends have said. You know, yeah. on that first trip, they saw such a huge change in me. Yeah, you and mentioned that a little bit in the in the blog. Can you speak to maybe one or two of those things that you've noticed in yourself or friends have said, gosh, Rich, you're so different? Well, a lot of, um, I think I have more patience, but yeah. a lot of it came down to, I think I wrote in my blog about um, taking secondhand clothes and shoes, thinking yeah. that those would be so needed and wanted. And when I got there, I would see people with just the 
brightest white mm -hmm. shirts mm -hmm. and my shirts were all gray and dingy yeah and just how they took such pride in the way they yeah. looked such pride in the way they dressed i was in just like ratty old shorts and mm -hmm. i don't know i just kind of thought that you know they are not secondhand people they mm -hmm. don't deserve secondhand clothes yeah. so that was one big change just the way i looked at um you know my blessings mm -hmm. and what i have been given mm -hmm. and what i wanted to give back mm -hmm. and just looking at we're all on this earth together. Yeah. And, um, yeah, my view of humanity just changed dramatically. Huh. That's very cool. So. That's very cool. So what's next in this journey for you with your murals? You've done three or four? Uh, we have done four. Okay. And um, I'd like to explain the other two. Yeah. Uh, the, the second one, or the third one, is um, of uh, a wall with, right now, there's three uh, graduates in cap and yeah. gowns. And of course, palm trees, because it's like the vibrance and the color right. that that adds to the mural. What's the importance of the graduates? Um, what you guys are doing by how many kids do you have in school in we Titayana? We have uh, in Titayana and surrounding areas a little over 250. 250 kids yeah. being educated, yeah. and that's really changing their lives and the lives of their community. Yeah. So that's what that is to show that these kids can get an education, yeah. they can change their community, they right. can change their life. Well, and when you when you pitched this idea to me about graduates, I don't know if, if the people watching are super familiar, but statistically in Haiti, less than 10% of people graduate. And so to be able to, for the kids who are graduating, to be able to see themselves like kind of encapsulated in forever on this wall of like, I did it, exactly. you know, it's not this one moment that maybe somebody forgot, but I did it. Like that's something to strive for, and I think the younger kids see that, and they're like, yeah. "I want to be on that wall someday too," you know. And, and they can just, be, and they can be exactly. And, and so I think that's they will be. So cool! Like, can you imagine if, you know, thousands of kids got an education in Titanian, and we had to like buy yeah. walls off people just <laughs> to put more pictures? So. That would be so cool! Like, gosh, I'm looking forward to that. Like, that we have to build so another cool. wall to get yeah, these kids on there. Darn it! Well, and another cool thing about. Titayan is in Creole. Titayan means little nothing or less than nothing. And it, it's it's the burial site for a lot of the bodies from the earthquake. It was kind of the, the garbage dump prior to the yeah. earthquake. And really, you're helping the community rise up to transform the what their community is known for. You know, yeah. it, maybe the name will never change, but how awesome would that be to have walls of just pictures of graduates of people who've actually graduated? Like, no, we're not less than nothing. Yep, we are something. That's what I believe yeah. they are, and yeah. they believe that themselves. Yeah, so. yeah. If you were to boil this down, what are you, what do you want people to take away from this experience? Uh, people in Titayan? Yeah, yeah, or just people who are engaged, everybody. Like, what does this mean? Yeah, because I mean, the, it's not just for the people in Titayan, that are yeah. the people that are gonna benefit, I, I would say the most, uh -huh. because they're, they get to experience it yeah. and be outside of it and take pictures in front of it. And they're, and and they're that feeling of accomplishment. it, right? It's, oh. They're the ones doing it. And if I can say, like, I was so worried about just paint being splattered everywhere. This last trip, everybody from the youngest to the oldest took so much mm -hmm. detail i mean it was their mural yeah and they were just amazing i i was just so inspired by that um just to empower the kids and the adults in the neighborhood yeah. that they can actually make these changes in their yeah. lives i know the people that are, are helping me here do this i think they feel that they've also been um, changed by this yeah. if nothing else they're learning more about haitian culture by just doing research and yeah like what is really appropriate for a mural in this yeah. community. Yeah, yeah, so. which is real. I'm really glad that you're doing that, and I think it's, um, it's cool for us to realize what what's needed and what's wanted there, and and for us to be able to give them that, yeah. give patients that. Essentially, Rich, it feels like you're beautifying people who are beautifying their community. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, so somebody wants to help. What can they do? Can they donate to this project? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything, a lot of times with nonprofits, it does come down to we need money. And skim coating is expensive, but it makes such a huge difference. And then, of course, we need money for paint. Mm -hmm. um, if that's not an option for you, we also need uh, creative ideas. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. yeah. Well, and and something help. to add on that is the donation isn't just paying... It's not paying an American to skim coat or an American nope. to paint. We're really providing jobs for people who are either selling us the paint or skim coating the wall. And so I think it's a, a cool way to think about it is it can be twofold. You're, you're buying a product that's beautifying a community and giving exactly. people an empowering experience. 
But at the same time, it, that might be putting food on the table for somebody for a week or yeah. a month, depending on how much they earn from it. So yeah. Awesome. So your money goes a long way. Yeah. In, so. in Haiti, it really does. So yeah. Rich, thank you again for just thank everything you. that you have done for this project, this blood, sweat and tears, I'm sure that I've gone into this. And I, <laughs> Seeing what I've seen so far, I can't wait to see what's next. I know that this, this community will never be the same. Great. Thank so, you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you.